Okay, runners, welcome back to the whiteboard. I want to talk about intensity today, and I want to give you a new way of thinking about intensity. And this video is going to be really important for the new runner, for the very injury prone runner, or the runner who's getting a little bit older, maybe the runner who's already a master's athlete or even a grandmaster's athlete into their 50s. So if you're injury prone, if you just started running within the last year, or if you're getting a little bit older, we're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this new perspective on intensity. Now, even if you are a competitive runner, you're not older or new, or you're particularly injury prone, this is still gonna let you help avoid your next injury and it's going to help you avoid any incident of burnout or overtraining syndrome. So let's dive in. Let me put a spectrum of intensity here on the whiteboard so that we can understand where different paces and efforts fall along the spectrum. All right, let's check this out. We have a very simple spectrum here where we're looking at intensity and on one side, we have a very easy recovery jog. This is like the slowest shuffle that we're ever actually gonna run in our training. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have a sprint, a 100% effort, maximum speed sprint. And right in the middle, we have the dividing line between running aerobically and running anaerobically. Now we can also plot what paces fall and where they fall along the spectrum. Let's also differentiate that not the entire side of this spectrum is going to be anaerobic. There's a certain intensity that gets so fast that it's not even anaerobic anymore. Over here, this very, this very end of this spectrum here is a lactic. So let's talk about some paces here and where they fall. Now we can look here at some very common race distances and where they fall along this spectrum of very easy jogging all the way over to max effort sprinting. So if we start over here, we have your recovery jog, the slowest pace that you're ever going to run way on the end of the spectrum. If we go a little bit faster, we have your normal easy running pace. Then there's your marathon pace. Finally, your half marathon pace. Now we cross this line Anything on the right side of this spectrum is going to be anaerobic. So we have your 10K pace. For most runners, the 10K is an anaerobic event. If your 10K time is about 55 minutes or, or faster, the 10K is anaerobic for you. If your 10K is around an hour or slower, then we're gonna be running it a little bit on the aerobic side. And that is actually a good thing because it means that we have a lot of room for improvement. And then we have your 5K pace and your mile pace as we get shorter and shorter in distance in race event as we get closer to the right side of the spectrum, the more anaerobic, the more intense, the faster these paces get. Finally, if we get right down to the end, we can do workouts that I know I've talked about many times that are not anaerobic, but a lactic. You know what that is? Hill sprints. Hill sprints are eight to 10 second maximum effort sprints. We are running up a steep hill as hard as you can, as fast as you can. Of course, maybe the first one's at 98% speed just to kind of help yourself warm up so that you don't pull a hamstring your first rep up the hill. But most hill sprints are done at maximum effort. And they're so short and they are so intense that you don't even get to the point of being anaerobic because you're not running long enough. So at only eight to 10 seconds at max intensity, these are actually a lactic. Uh, this is an elactic training session. I grew up on the track and on the cross country course, and I know that a peak performance takes the right training. It also takes the right gear. Nobody's running a PR in cotton socks and basketball shoes. <laughs> so if you are someone who's a performance oriented runner, you need the right training and the right gear to help you express a peak performance. And that's why I'm thrilled to partner with Bomba Socks on our YouTube channel. Use the link in our description underneath this video and code STRENGTH20 to save 20% off your first order with Bomba Socks. If you're trying to run a PR 
use a pair of Bombas socks. They are the most comfortable, high quality pair of socks that I've ever owned. And you're really gonna benefit from the high quality stitching and the real lack of prominent seams in their socks. So it's really gonna help you focus on your running, focus on the workout or the race that you're currently in, rather than on worrying about your socks and if they're up to the task. Plus what I really love about Bombas is the fact that not only are these maybe the most comfortable performance oriented socks that you've ever worn, but they're also the most charitable socks you might ever wear. For every pair that you order, they are gonna donate a pair to the needy. So use code STRENGTH20 at checkout with the link under this video in the description, and you're gonna save 20% on your first order at Bombas. Thank you, Bombas, for your support. Okay, now let's get to the good stuff. Why do we care about this? Well, if you are a new runner, if you are a runner who is particularly injury prone or you're getting, you're almost 50 or beyond, we need to change how we approach our training. One of the best ways to reduce our injury risk when we're injury prone or when, we, when we're older, and certainly as a training approach when we're new runners, is to avoid a lot of work here. This is the VO2 max, what I like to call the danger zone. Now, this is a zone of effort that is going to help you race to your fastest ability. When you go to the track and you do 10 by 400 meters at 5K pace, and maybe you start negative splitting that workout where the last couple reps are under your 5K pace, this is a very challenging workout. These workouts are brutal. These are the hard workouts where you go to the track or you're on the treadmill, no matter what the venue, but you are struggling. You are pushing the effort. You're running anaerobically. Your legs are feeling heavy. They've got that very familiar burn from lactic acid or lactate. That's this zone. For most runners, we want to be very cautious with this zone. And if you are an injury prone, older, or uh, new runner, we don't want to spend a lot of time in this VO2 max anaerobic zone. Yes, we can do some short repetitions, maybe 30 seconds or 200 meters at our mile race pace with substantial recovery. That's really going to help us get us comfortable with running fast. But we want to spend most of our time on either end of this spectrum. And that's really going to help us work on our endurance really build our volume, but at the same time, work on power and speed. These are the sides of the spectrum that give us the most fitness, while the middle area, this anaerobic side, really helps sharpen our fitness. Now, the reason for that is that the ends of the spectrum are much more foundational in nature. When you're running over here, when you're doing strides, when you're running hill sprints, when you're doing 20 to 30 second hill strides, like I talked about with coach David Roche in a recent episode of the Strength Running Podcast, when you're doing those things, you're way over here on this end of the spectrum. You're building strength, speed, and power. You're building coordination. You're, and you're doing it in a way that isn't super stressful. You are building those things in a much safer environment than if you were doing them in this anaerobic difficult, more VO2 max oriented zone. And then if we're talking about this side of the spectrum, here's where we're building our general endurance, our more specific endurance. This is where we're gradually working on building more mitochondria in our cells. And we're really creating the cellular foundation for endurance. So if you want to become a good distance runner, we need to, we need to do a lot of work here, a fair amount of work here, and a little bit of work here. That's the rough level of ingredients here on this spectrum that you want in your training. Now, the more competitive you are, the younger you are, and the more experience you have, the more time you can spend in this zone. But again, we wanna make sure our training is periodized appropriately so that we're not doing these workouts week in and week out. That's how you get hurt. That's how you end up getting overtrained or you just feel burned out. So if you are one of those runners who might be slightly more at risk, whether that's for injury, whether you're just starting out as a new runner and you need to work on your foundation, or if you're a little bit older and these workouts might present a bit more risk, we do wanna spend more time on the poles. 
that's gonna help you become a better runner and it's much less stressful.